Hello, this is Dane Takahashi from VentureBeat. I'm here with Ken Ralston from uh, 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 38 Studios, and uh, you've got a, a new game called uh, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning coming out. It's a role-playing game, so tell us more about that, Ken. Yeah. I think what uh, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is supposed to be is as good as any other AAA role-playing game. It has all the good things that you have in all those other games so that you want to have it if you're a hardcore role-playing gamer. But at the same time, you say, it's got something that's better, and mm -hmm. the thing that's better is combat. Mm -hmm. It's because I love your ability to be able to move in a two-dimensional space mm -hmm. relative to a lot of different enemies. I love the complexity mm -hmm. of that real-world problem. Mm -hmm. That's great interactivity problem-solving. Mm -hmm. And then I like to put on top of it the idea of this advancement system where you can pick and choose from all these different abilities that are just cool that you haven't done before, like the chakrams, which I thought were a terrible idea, which are uh, mm -hmm. frisbees that, mm -hmm. you know, th magical frisbees you throw and kill people. I said, that's terrible. And then it mm -hmm. turns out it's great because they go right through you and they do these elaborate curly cues mm -hmm. and it always ha it happens so quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's all in the, uh, in the fantasy of being uh, magic cues, you say, yeah, mm -hmm. those are magical metal and they do <laughs> cool things because I'm a cool frisbee man. Yeah. So I, I should uh, uh, say you're a veteran of uh, role-playing games here, designing them and playing them for many years, and uh, so you've you've got strong opinions, about, I guess, about what you want to see in the future. I am tiresomely mm -hmm. opinionated, and mm -hmm. it comes from experience. And I expect, as a visionary, mm -hmm. that everyone should trust everything I say because I'm really, really, really smart. Mm -hmm. And what <laughs> it really comes down to is, and you're working with Kurt Schilling here, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, because and because he can throw a baseball and because mm -hmm. he's a huge guy and I'm terrified of him. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing I, I believe in, mm -hmm. I believed in it long before I could actually play it. Mm -hmm. I believe that better movement, better animation, better combat choices per unit time mm -hmm. would be a more immersive game. Mm -hmm. And I also felt that I was right where other people might be wrong in that because other people might be so comfortable with the old PC mm -hmm. and paper and pencil slower paced combat. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. felt that combat was good enough. Mm -hmm. I just didn't think it was good enough mm -hmm. and I didn't really know how to solve that problem so I don't get any credit for solving the problem. I just get mm -hmm. credit for saying that that's, that's an opportunity. Uh -huh. And at Big Huge Games they were able to solve that problem by stealing from action games the mm -hmm. idea of how animations Mm -hmm. have well, each frame has significance in terms of its combat which mm -hmm. turns out to mean that the animations are good as well as the gameplay mm -hmm. they're interconnected mm -hmm. and also and, and you started this game at big huge games and yes. then it, it got um, uh, acquired by 38 studios right? actually so, the uh, 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 this particular game uh -huh. wasn't the same game uh -huh. but many of the same systems and, and uh -huh. uh, ideas were uh, translated into so you adapted those systems to the new yes, universe absolutely. that 38 is many of with, them, with R.A. Salvatore them. and Todd McFarlane. But right? Todd McFarlane, yeah. for, mm. for example, mm. and very important influence mm. in the animation and uh, mm. the drama and the visceral aspect of it. Mm. And R.A. Salvatore in producing a 10,000 year history that excited even me, mm -hmm. who's a jaded, you know, a guy who's been everywhere, done everything. And mm -hmm. I've, I've always appreciated his work, but basically knowing that he understands world building in the same way that I have and has the same ambitions, and then getting to read it and work with it, it was just, it was an unusual uh, treat, mm -hmm. special treat. And uh, uh, the process of, of sort of switching gears like this, uh, how did you deal with that? It's only because I'm so hugely mature and in my declining <laughs> years and essentially self-assured uh, as an individual uh, that I found it, you know, whenever you can see something is better, you mm -hmm. should always take it even if it's not yours. Uh -huh. And I'm very graceful about recognizing when somebody knows something more than I do, uh -huh. particularly when it's in aid of something that I think is important, which is mm -hmm. making great combat in a role-playing game. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. And uh, so th this is just part of this larger universe of uh, an MMO that's also coming uh, at some point, right? This, so. the Amalur is intended to be mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a setting for both massively multiplayer online role-playing games and for role-playing games and for many other mediums too. Mm -hmm. And having that quality of uh, visionaries in it makes it a more plausible uh, proposition mm -hmm. than it might be otherwise. 
Cool. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much.